this word. Um, I'm just messing it up. I haven't. Can't seem to get it straight. Okay, now it didn't even pronounce the word for you. This is the Greek word, okonomia. Strong's G, 3622, okonomia. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things about uh, that I like about this um, this particular website is that it also helps you to get the definition of the word and you can um, you can go into it, you know it tells you it gives you a definition here but for our purposes I, I that was just a little training exercise uh, for our purposes here uh, the word uh, it says here that the word is used appears nine times economia Nine times in the New Testament, in six of these appearances, Luke 16, uh, 2, 4, and the, let me see, and the other references I believe it gave here, yeah, Luke 16, 2, 3 to 4, 1 Corinthians 9, 17, Ephesians 3, 2, Ephesians 1, 10, and Colossians 1, 25. Uh, they're all words where this word is used, and it is translated stewardship or dispensation and refers to a responsibility or office or ministry in touch, entrusted to one's care by a high authority. That was one de definition. And then uh, we come to uh, a definition that's used more regularly, and it says, in light of the usage of the word for dispensation in the New Testament, the term dispensation, as it relates to dispensational theology, could be defined as a particular way of God, God's administering his rule over the world as he progressively works out his purpose for world history. And so when we think about when we think about uh, dispensational theology, uh, which is where we were in looking at uh, this chart here, we this is something that you are familiar with. You are familiar with the, the fact that um, that we have we've had uh, dispensations. We call it innocence. We call it conscience. We call it human government. Uh, we also call it promise. We call it law. We call it grace. And in this case, uh, according to the chart, is called the kingdom or restoration of Israel, or we've called it the millennium, or we've called it the reign of Christ. There's different uh, names you may have heard it called by, but all of it has uh, basically some common factors. And one of the common factors is that uh, you remember, again, we've used this a number of times, that back in, the, back in Genesis, God gave man... A particular responsibility and that responsibility was um, wh what did he tell man to do do you remember the responsibility he gave to man he did he gave him authority to rule and what was he to do with that authority <coughs> Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Because we're going to use that to to go go back to um, to to the book of Revelation. Take a look with me to Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six to twenty eight. 
I'm just using this so that we can be, become more uh, familiar with it again. Uh, and I know you are, but it's just a review. Um, and in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28, what does it say? Uh-huh. Amen. And that's the authority Sister Blanche was talking about. God gave man authority. But he, then he also gave him a responsibility. And take a look at Genesis chapter 2. And verse 15. Someone read that? In verse, I'm sorry, verse 16 and 17 also. Okay, thank you. Now we see here that God gave man uh, a responsibility not only to have dominion over the fish and the sea and the fowl of the earth and every uh, living thing that moved, but he also gave him responsibility not to eat of the tree of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And of course we know what happened. And we know as a result we are in our problem today. So there and, and in each one of these dispensations, and I'm not going to go through them, but it is just want to use it to bring us up to our lesson for today. Um, God also gave man a responsibility in. In in the, the kingdom age. And one of the things about the kingdom age, what would be different about the kingdom age as opposed to. All the other ages. What is one thing that you you studied? We've talked about it. That would be different. What makes the kingdom age a kingdom age? Say that again. Christ sets up his kingdom. Amen. You know that. You know that. So Christ will set up his kingdom. He's going to rule for how long? A thousand years. Now, let's let's just so we have a scripture reference and, you know, you know why, why we say what we say. Uh, turn with me to Revelation. 20. And you know why Sister Sheila said what she just said. Revelation 20. Let's take a look at verse four. Verses four through six. And someone have that verse. Rained.
Okay. So what we see here, we see a number of things in these verses. We see that um, it said that he, he talks about he saw thrones and, and uh, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, uh, who had not received the mark or the, uh, or the image uh, on his hand or forehead, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's that's the uh, basic scripture for the uh, thousand year reign of Christ, the millennial period. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were over. And blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. OK, because he will live and reign with Christ a thousand years. OK. Um. Now, we know that the, there is a problem because there's always been a problem. We found that man cannot uh, govern himself um, because there is always a problem when man tries to govern himself. Okay? I mean, all we have to do is look at the last few weeks in the city of Baltimore. Uh, man had problems governing himself. Now, we're going to compare that, so I want you to think about what is the difference. And, and, and we're going to look at the difference in the millennial kingdom compared to what we just went through and see how it relates or how it's different. And we've been talking about that all along. I had, I had some uh, things where we had put on the board. I know they're not up there now, I'm sure. But uh, of what it was like to live in the millennial kingdom. And so we want to think about that and compare. How does that compare the millennial kingdom with what we just experienced the last few weeks? And we'll take a look at that. But what we see is in verses 7 through 9, we see how. Uh, even with Christ reigning on the earth, that man cannot govern himself. And so let's take a look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. And when someone began to be that for us. Okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about this, um, this, this period of time here. And we see one of the significant things about that as God goes through these, puts us through these different tests of ways of seeing if, how, how man will, will govern himself, is that in this case, Satan has been allowed to roam from, from the beginning, going all the way back to the garden, all the way back to the garden until the beginning of the millennial kingdom. Satan has been there to influence man. And then we see during this thousand year uh, in, during this thousand year period, at, at the beginning of the, um, the thousand years, the reign of Christ, Satan is bound. Now, we didn't really look at that, but if you go to Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verses 1 through 3, we'll see that he was bound. Uh, we didn't read that, but um, that, just to read it quickly. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. 
And he laid hold of the dragon. It even tells us who the dragon is. That old serpent who is, we know him by the devil. And we also know him by Satan. And he bound him a thousand years. And what else did he do to him? Into the bottomless pit and did what? Shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he will be released for a short time. OK, so we see that he's bound and yet and Christ is reigning on the earth. And. Um, yet. Man. Still wants to rebel after the thousand years are up. OK, even after living in, you might say, the best we've ever had. Uh, he still wants to rebel. So what I want to do is take a look, go back and take a look at some of the things that uh, the scripture talked about with um, with the reign of Christ. What it's going to be like now, we, we looked at some of these. And let's see if I can go back to the beginning. Okay, I think you can see some of that. Okay, we talked about what it would be like. There would be peace and joy. And we talked about there will be justice. We all like justice, right? And there will be agricultural prosperity. The curse would be removed. You know how we have to work so hard now. We slaving and Michael's got to go to work and sweat and uh, have a mean look on his face when he come home because he got all the people <laughs> talking about it. Co-workers, you know, yanking at him. Uh, you know, it's just a hard life sometimes. Um, there would be no uh, carnivorous animals, animals killing other animals and all those kinds of things. Diseases and deformity would be removed. Family life would be continued on the earth for a longer period of time. We'll, we'll live longer. <coughs> Longevity is restored. And then we were getting down. These are some of the areas that we want to cover today. <coughs> but, you know, I, I was thinking about, as I was studying this, what, it was, what will be different between the the period that we were living in a couple of weeks ago and now. And so I, I just asked you, what, what do you see that would be different? What do you prefer? What do you think? Uh, we don't can't know exactly what's going to happen. I understand that. But based on what we do know from the scriptures. Uh, you, you follow what I'm saying? Okay. What, what, what do you think as you think about what experienced a few weeks ago? What do you, what would be different? Mm hmm or destroy. So, so you see that there will be no need to go out and protest. The, okay, we'll, we'll be unified. Uh, Sister Mary?
What an interesting concept. <laughs> we have respect for others. So that will be different. We will learn to have respect for other people, to love other people. Isn't that what he said from the beginning? Um, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Uh, when he talked about the, the two greatest commandments. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What an interesting concept. But we'll finally put it into practice, right? Uh, that's, that's great. And so, therefore, you, you won't be going out to burn somebody else's property. Um. As a matter of fact, even before, this is something else that's different. They won't be able to get into the kingdom in the first place. Think about that. Um, because those who do go in will have to be, what is one requirement for going into the kingdom? I want to go back to it. It talked about it here. Uh, turn with me to Revelation 20 and 6. And when someone read it aloud, 20 and 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you look at that, and you think about that, one of the prerequisites is that they must be born again. Okay? Born again. Look at it. It says, Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Um, of such, the second death uh, has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So, if the second death has no power. You know the old Adam, Adam, uh, idiom, born once, die twice, born twice, you die once. You get that? You got that, right? Okay, okay. If you got it, I'm, you know, I figured. <laughs> Just picking on you. You weren't here when I thanked her, but told everybody how you how you uh, filled in for me. So I appreciate it. Um, but uh, but but that's that's the idiom. Born once, die twice, and the second death, the eternal death. You're gonna die twice if you've only been born once. Must you must? Scripture says, John. Let's turn to it. John chapter three. In verses 3 to 5. And you're familiar with this when the Lord was speaking to who? Nicodemus. And if you have the scripture, please read it for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, and, and could you go back to verse three, uh, three to six, uh, three to five? Jesus answered and said unto him. 
him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Paulette. So, you see, that's a prerequisite. It said, except that a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, so that was a prerequisite. Okay, yes. Exactly, exactly. You can't see it. So, when we talked about the things that, like a few weeks ago, and what you expect during the millennial kingdom, uh, Many of those people won't even be there, okay, um, unless they repent, you know, repent and have a change of heart. Um, there won't be that kind of activity going on. Um, so there, there will be a recognition of respect for, for others. Uh, we'll see that. Um, the other thing to do was to take a look at some of the things that we we did not cover the last time I was with you. We talked about I believe we talked about a unified language, but there was another one. Oh, those are some questions that I went to ask you. There was another one about a unified worship. And so we, we get this idea with a unified language and a unified there'll be unity in the kingdom of God. There won't be all this stuff about um, you know, you have to you know, you got all these rights, and everybody's got a right to something. And we figure out if this person gets a right, does it violate the other person's right? Uh, for instance, to make it more real, you have a business, and a person comes in and says, I want a cake. Okay, so you make the cake, a wedding cake. And now it says, Well, I want to make a wedding cake that uh, has two men on it, two, a man kissing a man. And you have a problem with that. And so you says, well, sir, I can make you a cake, but I don't want to make a cake where I have to put, it, put in something that, um, that I find degrading. So now you got a problem with the law, okay? Because the, the state law may say you cannot discriminate against another person's right. Well, what they're forgetting is that you have a right too, the freedom of religion. And that's part of what's being debated. Now, if we look at, we were talking about laws in the millennial kingdom, there will only be one law. Whose law is that? God's law. And um, he said that marriage was between a man and a woman. Um, and there will be kids born during this period. And uh, so, uh, but the law would be God's law and not man's law. Let's take a look at some of these where it talked about unified worship. Uh, if you turn to Micah chapter 5, verse 10 to 15, let's turn there and see what it has to say.
Micah chapter 5, verse 10 to 15. If you have it, uh, would you please read it? Amen. Is that like toleration to you? Um, don't sound like toleration to me. Only toleration of what God says. What he says in his word. Because otherwise I will cut it off. I will destroy. I will pluck. I will execute vengeance. In anger. Uh, let's turn to another one. Uh, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 20 and 23. Does someone read uh, Zechariah? Chapter 8, verses 20 to 23. Amen. Amen. So we'll see that there will be. It won't be like you go by your neighbors, you see your neighbors. And we know our neighbors. Some have a place of worship, some don't. Some decided, like my neighbor told me, you look, I have my own way of worshiping. And uh, so. He does his own thing. Uh, no, no, it's not, because that's mostly on Saturday or some other time, uh, you know, during the week. But um, not that we shouldn't be worshiping the Lord all week, but you get the point that it's not worshiping the Lord. But here it says they were uh, 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 be encouraging their neighbor or the neighbor would want to come. All will come. All will come and worship the Lord. Because the, the kingdom, it'll be different. Uh, the kingdom would be different. So we can we can see what some of the some of the differences. Say, uh, turn with me also to Zechariah chapter 13, verse two. And it says, and it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. And they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets in the unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. And it should come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother who begot him shall say unto him, thou shalt not live for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother who begot him shall thrust him through 
uh, when he prophesied. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed, every one of his vision when he have prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am a farmer, for many, for man taught me to keep cattle uh, from my youth. In other words, those who are not prophets will be uh, wiped out. And um, those who speak lies, um, they will be thrust through and so forth. There, uh, there'll be no false prophets. There'll be no false prophecy. Uh, it, it'll be, uh, be, the, be the Lord. Worship of the Lord. Worship will be unified. And so uh, the scripture that he has, yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Zechariah 8.22. We would also have the presence of God. You know, I find it um, strange. I must say this. In looking at the um, the events on television the last couple of weeks, there was a group there that represented, say they represented, they were from the household of faith. They were from many faiths, from what I recall hearing. And one thing I was trying to here was did what I heard, did it match what I read? That's what I tried to hear. Did it match what I read? And I had a problem trying to match what I was hearing with what I believe God says. First of all, I heard no glory to Jesus. I didn't. I didn't hear any glory to God. Um, and so I was wondering whose message they were delivering. Um, but that was just me. I'm, you know, maybe I missed something. Y'all help me if I did. I know you'll come up to me and let me know. Um, But it also talks about the uh, one of the one of the things that will take place during the millennium will be talking about the presence of God. And it says, my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Um, I, I heard, a, you, you know, as I think back, I didn't hear much of that. Where there was universal rejoicing about. God is doing about what you haven't given me or what I'm due or what I need or why I'm in the situation I'm in. And you know, some I, I, I really had a problem. Not that I and I don't mean to to make uh, to make um, light of the fact that we have to treat each other right. I, I, I realize that. Police, you know, police have to treat people right. Okay? People have to reach the respect for the police. It works both ways. I, I, I was watching, uh, and I, there was an article in yesterday's paper that I didn't, didn't get to read, but it was talking about where the police were hesitant to, to, re, to act. And one of the things that I'm really concerned about is that these young men, and again, I'm not saying that I minimize that they have a res they have to respect citizens, okay? But but on the other hand, I'm thinking about them, that some of these are members of our family. Uh, you, you know, we were asking to pray for them in jobs where 
the job was just so frustrating, I said, well, you know, maybe this is not for me. And, and I wonder about that for those who protect us. If at some point they say, well, you know, whatever I do, I'm going to be criticized for it. So I just take the, the minimal way out for now, which may not be good for you as a citizen. And as a result, um, we have more lawlessness. And I think about the fact that the crime that we have is, is a lot of the crime is in our own neighborhood. We things we do to one another. Not what somebody else did to us, but things we do to one another. So I think we need to be very careful what we ask for. That's just my opinion. Um, but I'm saying that because from the scripture standpoint, um, I, I think there has to be, uh, we have to, we, we need to work together. Uh, police and citizens need to work together. We depend on them. And of course, they depend on us. So it's, it's a thing that we work together. Um, but what I was doing was trying to compare what, the, what life would be like during the millennial period as compared to now. That's some of what I'm doing here. Another area that we that the author mentions maybe I'm making this too real. I, it's I, I'm I'm trying to see if anybody wants to say anything, and and and, and not that you have to. Um, but if there's any comment, for instance, um. Let's take a look at labor. Oh, I missed one. Freedom from oppression. Now, that's a good one because that falls, again, I was trying to get away from it for a minute, it falls to what we were talking about. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. Someone read that, please. The Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He who ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. Um, I'm not sure that I followed that one. I want to look at that one in a different context. Let me take a look while we're on that. Uh, turn with me to Joel chapter 3 verse 16.
Joel chapter 3, verse 16. And someone read that loudly, 16 and 17. Joel chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Well, let me see, because our time is about to go. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall we know that I am. So shall ye know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall be no strangers pass through her anymore. Um, there will be no more oppressors, there will be no more armies, there will be no more uh, police presence. If you um, why? Because the Lord says so. He's 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 going to be there. So shall you know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion. OK. Um, we're going to we're going to finish this up uh, next week. We're going to try to finish this up, uh, this portion of it. Um, I ask you to continue. There's about maybe four to go. Um, where he talks about instructions, sacrifices reinstated. A missionary uh, witness and we want to just take a look at those and we'll finish up uh, that portion of the scripture uh, it's all dealing with the millennial kingdom what the millennial kingdom would be like that's what we're taking a look at. Uh, what the millennial kingdom will, will be like at least as much as we can stand it um, Comments before we close. Any questions? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay, time is up. Okay, so thank you so much for your participation this morning. I appreciate it. Even silence can be golden. And uh, so uh, just ask you to uh, continue to study um, the word and uh, because it all has something for us to learn. Okay. And uh, Father God, we are indeed grateful to you again for your precious word. Father, our goal is to study, to know what it, you, to know what you're like, to know what it is that you desire of us, to know what it is that you would help us to do. And Father, we pray that we would uh, then take those things and live in a way that glorifies you. And um, Father, we just uh, thank you for your blessings to us. We pray that you be glorified throughout this day. We ask that you be, get glory in Jesus' name. For we just praise you and thank you for sending your son to die in our place. And dear Lord, we pray that we would give you the glory forever and ever. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.